Yeah. So, good evening once again, dear. So, am I visible and audible to you? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Good. So, okay, let's start with the class. Got it? So, in last class, what we have discussed? In the last class, we have discussed the valence bond theory, right? So, valence bond theory we have discussed in the last class. And have you studied that theory? Have you gone through the theory? Valence bond theory, Werner's theory, isomerism, nomenclature. Yes, very good, very good. Great. Okay. So, now, today, la, let's see the crystal field theory. The last theory of this lesson, but the very important theory among all. Okay. It is the crystal field theory. And under this crystal field theory, there are some topics we are going to discuss. So the first topic is the postulates of crystal field theory and the octahedral splitting, examples of octahedral splitting, tetrahedral splitting using crystal field theory, and color of coordination compounds, bonding in metal carbonyls and applications of coordination compounds. So all these topics we are going to cover. We will try to cover today, okay? As time permits, we will do all these. Now, first we will move on with the first topic that is postulates of crystal field theory, okay? Yes, move, before moving on to the first point or the first postulate of crystal field theory, I would like to discuss about the shapes of d orbitals which you have studied in your class 11 okay so how many types of d orbitals are there and what are their names can you tell me how many d orbitals are there how many d orbitals we have we have three p orbitals and one d orbitals right oh, sorry one uh, s orbital right can you tell me how many d orbitals we have very good. It is five. So now I am going to discuss the shapes of those five. The I just I'm going to recall. Already you might be knowing this. Let me just recall the shapes. So coming to the there are five d orbitals: d x y y z z x x square minus y square and z square. The first three d orbitals have four lobes, and you can see the lobes are in between the axes. For the first three orbitals, you can see the lobes are between the axis. Okay. And for the last two orbital, the x square minus y square and z square orbital, you can see the lobes are along the axis. They are on the axis. Electron density is on the axis. Okay. So this is what you have to keep in mind first. Now I'll go with the postulates of uh, CFT. So the first postulate is. It is an electrostatic model. Okay. It is an electrostatic. What is meant by electrostatic? Electrostatic means ionic. Electrostatic means it is ionic. Okay. So the metal ligand bond is ionic in nature. That is the first assumption of crystal field theory. Got it? Metal ligand bond is ionic. Now the second postulate is ligands can be of two types. Okay, one is anionic ligand and the other one is neutral ligand. Anionic ligands are considered as point charges and neutral ligands are considered as dipoles. Neutral ligands are considered as dipoles. So you can see it is a point charge which has a negative charge. And if the ligand is neutral like uh, in case of H2O, H2O is a ligand, right? In v VBT, valence bond theory also we have discussed. So here oxygen is uh, negatively charged and hydrogens are positively charged. So here dipole is formed, plus minus poles are formed. So the neutral ligands are acting as a dipole and anionic ligand. Example for anionic ligand, we can take Cl minus, Br minus. They are anionic ligands with a negative charge in it. So they are considered as point charges. Okay, this is the second point. So what is the first point? It is an electrostatic model. 
means the metal and ligand contains ionic bond and they are of two ligands are of two types one is anionic and the other one is neutral anion anionic ligands are point charges and uh, neutral ligands are considered as dipoles okay and coming to the third point the third point about this metal and ligand bond so there is two types of attraction between this the first is the electrostatic attraction due to positive and negative charge electrostatic attraction due to positive and negative charge got it and the second one is electrostatic repulsion due to the electrons present in metal and ligand so metal also contains some valence electrons right ligands are also containing the electrons so between them mixing they are like charges repulsion occurs repulsion occurs got it but due to the electron deficiency of metal and the electron rich capacity of ligand there is some attraction okay so because of these two type of uh, interaction in the ligand field the energy of all the 5d orbitals is increased because of the repulsion and attraction so one force overcomes the other one so because of this what is going to happen the energy of all the d orbitals is now going to little bit rise okay it is it is going to get raised now i'll show you the free metal atom or the ion and ions are mostly smaller in size compared to neutral atom so you can see the metal atom and the ion here so now for a isolated metal atom or an isolated ion all the d orbitals are of same energy all the 5d orbitals are of same energy okay the same energy is nothing but degenerate they are degenerate orbitals degenerate means same energy so you can see all the if energy is increasing like this you can see that all the 5d orbitals are having same energy okay now when the ligand tries to approach this metal ion first they will be all the ligands will be in a spherical field they are coming from coming in the same direction okay in the spherical direction they are coming so in the spherical field all the degenerate five degenerate orbitals will little bit will little bit go higher in energy okay initially this is the energy point and now all the five d orbitals are slightly going higher in energy so all the energy of d orbital is raised got it in spherical field energy is raised now next what happens now after the spherical field according to the number of ligands we have different types of sets right octahedral tetrahedral square planar like this we do have many different types of geometries now if the geometry is octahedral if the geometry is octahedral in octahedral the splitting occurs the all five degenerate orbitals is now going to split so how they are going to split Three below and two above. Got it? This is the octahedral splitting. And if the field is tetrahedral, then in tetrahedral field, what they are going to do? We do have four ligands in tetrahedral. Okay. Now from the spherical field, this is the spherical field. Now from the spherical field, two ligands are going very far away from each other, and two ligands are like this. Now all they are in the tetrahedral format. In tetrahedral splitting. field they are going to get split again into two but two below and three above got it so these are the splitting patterns now i will discuss uh, in more detail about the octahedral splitting and tetrahedral splitting okay so i hope uh, uh, this is uh, understandable for you so if you having any doubt you can put it in the chat box okay so first we will go with octahedral splitting first concept is octahedral splitting so let me go with octahedral complex so in octahedral complex we will have one metal atom which is attached to six ligands if the ligand is monodentic okay means six donor sites will be there for a octahedral complex so there is a metal atom to you now ligands are going to approach when all the ligands are coming and approaching this metal atom first the metal atom is going to surrounded by the six ligands okay metal atom surrounded by spherical crystal field now after some time 
octahedral field will come okay so this is the uh, process now in octahedral field splitting going to occur uh, the orbital splitting in octahedral complex will be first all are there in the degenerate state with the low energy in spherical field they are going above and in octahedral field splitting is occurring so dx y y z z are going down z square x square minus y square is going up now you can see the three orbitals which has come lower in energy they together are called as t2g orbital so what is t t means triply degenerate t represents triply degenerate okay one this uh, g, uh, g denotes the symmetry so g uh, denotes the symmetry center of symmetry and the orbitals which has gone above they together are called as eg e represents your doubly degenerate orbital okay e denotes the doubly degenerate orbitals got it now the one which is separating these two one which is separating these two orbitals they are represented as barycenter the center point is called as barycenter okay and the splitting between t2g and eg the splitting between t2g and eg that splitting is called as delta o delta means splitting delta is nothing but your splitting now this splitting is uh, occurring in octahedral field right so that's why it is called as delta o okay now we should know the energy between the barycenter and the higher energy orbital and the energy value between the barycenter and lower energy orbital so what is that so the barycenter and higher energy orbital have 3 by 5 delta o and the lower energy orbitals and barycenter have 2 by 5 delta o got it so this is the splitting of the orbital in octahedral crystal field got it delta o represents what is the representation of delta o it is crystal field splitting delta o is nothing but the crystal field splitting so eg orbitals are raised by 3 by 5 delta o and t2g orbitals are lowered by 2 by 5 delta o so that is the difference eg is raised by 3 by 5 and t2g is decreased or lowered by 2 by 5. so these are all the very very important information you should know about the d orbital splitting in octahedral system got it any doubt students from this if you're having any doubt just put it in the chat box or if it is clear to you put yes in the chat box if you're having any doubt regarding the splitting the center point splitting uh, between barry center and the orbitals you can ask me i'll repeat it again both of you hitashri and puja is this clear yes okay now next we will uh, go to spectrochemical series okay so what is that uh, spectrochemical series it is based on the ligand strength now all the ligands are going to arranged in a specific series from the strong uh, from the low field to the uh, i mean uh, weak field to the strong field so ligands are arranged in the increasing order of their field strength okay and those ligands which are arranged in the increasing order of their field strength is nothing but the spectrochemical series so you can see all the negatively charged ligands they are occupying the weak field end weak field ligand end and all the neutral and some of the anionic cn minus and uh, mostly the neutral ligands nh3 and co they will be falling under this uh, strong field side okay this is your strong field ligand part so mostly edta nh3 ethylene diamond cn minus and co they are strong field ligands okay they are called as strong field ligands strong field ligand is nothing but the splitting will be more the t2g eg orbital splitting i have uh, showed you right so that splitting gap that delta o is more in case of strong field 
Whereas in case of weak field like I minus, Br minus, SCN minus, etc. So the field is very weak, weak field ligand. They are weak field ligand. Means the delta O will be very less. They create very less crystal field splitting. Got it? So here, in case of strong field, delta O is more. In case of weak field, the delta O is very less. Got it? So what you have to do? You have to memorize the strong field ligand list and the weak field ligand list. Got it? So by practice, you will get to know about it. So don't worry about it. By practice, you will get to know. Any doubt, students? So far from the splitting of octahedral field and uh, from the spectrochemical series. No doubt. Shall I go with the, yeah, OK. Shall I, uh, now I'll go with the examples of octahedral splitting. We will discuss some examples. Examples in the sense by using the number of D electrons, OK? For the first case, I'll take D1, D2, and D3 complex. For all the system which has D1, D2, D3 system, let me show you the splitting diagram. First, for D1, now you can see one electron is present here in the D orbital. And in spherical field, energy is going little above. Now in octahedral field, uh, they are going to split it into two, T2G and EG. And that one electron is present in the T2G orbital. Okay, this is how you have to fill the electrons for D1. In case of D2, what we will do, there are two electrons and the two electrons are occupying the two T2G orbital. Two electrons are occupying the two T2G orbitals, here one and here two. Okay, in case of D3, in case of D3, what is going to happen? There will be three electrons and those three electrons are again going to occupy the three orbitals of T2G. The orbitals of T2. Okay. So now, according to Aufbau's principle, D1, D2, D3 metal atom electrons will occupy the lower T2G orbital. What is Aufbau's principle? What is Aufbau's principle? Electrons are arranged in the increasing order of energy level, is the Aufbau's principle. Electrons are arranged in the Increasing order of energy level is your off bus principle. So you can see energy is increasing like this from lower energy to higher energy. Got it? First, the electrons are filled in the lower energy orbital, then only they will go to the higher energy orbital. Okay? This is your off bus principle. So this is the D3, D3 uh, system. Okay? Then coming to D4. For D4, we have two possibilities. <laughs> For D4B. Yeah, good evening, Sandeep. Why are you joining uh, very late? Huh? Huh? You are joining, see, it is 424. Hmm? You are joining very late. Why? Why are you missing the classes? Huh? Study arts? Where? In your school? You are there in the study at your school? Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, no problem, but try to join on time, okay? Fine. Good evening for you. So the two possibilities are for D4 R. So this is the first possibility. In the first possibility, the fourth electron is occupying the EG orbital. Okay, the first electron is the fourth electron is occupying the EG orbital. Now, in the second case, the fourth electron is occupying the T2G orbital. So, now which one is correct? First possibility or the second possibility? You guys tell me. Or both are correct. Or both have some reasons. What do you see? Any idea about this? Any about? Any idea about this? No idea for anyone? No idea, students? So in which case we will observe the first possibility and in which case we will observe the second possibility? Both are correct. 
okay and both possibilities will exist okay now i am going to tell you in which case the first possibility will exist and in which case the second possibility will exist okay you can observe that in case of first possibility the fourth electron is going to the eg orbital you see here for d complexes we do have two different uh, uh, configurations like this in the first case also we are having delta o splitting is there and in second case also we are having the splitting so that delta o is nothing but the crystal field splitting energy which separates the t2g and eg orbital okay and there is also one more term here called as pairing energy so pairing energy is the energy required for the electron pairing in a single orbital so in case of second possibility you can see pairing occurs in case of this orbital so for that pairing some amount of energy is required okay if an electron wants to get paired in a single orbital some amount of energy is required got it now due to these two delta o and pairing energy we are going to get two different situation okay ligands are splitted into two one is strong field ligand and the other one is weak field ligand in case of weak field ligand containing complexes or the weak field ligands will create very less splitting field very less splitting but strong field ligands will create more crystal field splitting that is in case of weak field delta o is very less and in case of strong field ligand system delta o is more i'll show you if the delta o is very less than the pairing energy if the delta o is very less than the pairing energy then what your electron will do it will go to the eg orbital because it, the splitting is very less the t2g eg orbital splitting is very less so instead of getting paired in the lower energy orbital electron is trying to because it has to just absorb very less amount of energy right so it will absorb that less amount of energy and it will go to the eg orbital if the splitting is very high if we have more crystal field splitting if delta o is more than the pairing energy then the electron will enter into the t2g orbital i'll show you the picture you just see and compare the delta o between the two cases so here the distance is very less very less amount of energy is absorbed the electron can go easily to the eg orbital instead of getting paired to this orbital okay so pairing energy will be more than the energy that is absorbing to go to the higher energy orbital got it but whereas in case of the strong there is more splitting so the energy that has to be absorbed to go to the eg orbital is very very high so instead of absorbing such a huge energy it will go and pair it will go and pair with the uh, with its uh, other electron in the t2g orbital so that's why pairing is happening here got it so the electrons which are going to the higher energy orbital in case of weak field ligand they are called as high spin complex and the electron pairing cases leads to low spin complex okay this slide is very very important take a screenshot of it or you can take a note of it okay if you are having any doubt here in this case you can ask me strong field ligands will pair up and weak field ligands will not pair up strong field ligands forms low spin and weak field ligands are called as high spin complexes is this concept clear to all of you if it is clear just put yes in the chat box or if you are having any doubt just ask me i will repeat it again this is very very important so i am waiting for your response students clear for all are you all there in the class okay yes thank you sandeep fine i'll uh, go to the next splitting which is called as tetrahedral splitting yeah tetrahedral splitting so for tetrahedral splitting tetrahedral complexes are there and in tetrahedral complexes also we have a metal atom and the ligands right metal atom is there 
and all the four ligands will first surround this metal atom so because of this surround uh, ligand surrounding the metal atom the energy energy of the metal uh, energy of the d orbital will slightly go higher in energy because of the spherical crystal field and after this the tetrahedral field will come metal atom surrounded by yeah it is tetrahedral okay it is tetrahedral actually so this is how we are getting the tetrahedral complexes now how the splitting is going to occur for this type of system so first the free metal atom is there which is in the lower energy and all the five d orbitals are degenerate now they are raising in the energy wise in case of spherical field then in case of tetrahedral field the splitting is now going to occur so the orbitals coming lower in energy they are dz square and the x square y square the other three orbitals are going higher in energy just the opposite of uh, octahedral okay now the name the name of these two orbitals are e it is not eg it is e so i told you that g represents the symmetry so tetrahedral uh, compound is not symmetric the octahedral is having center of symmetry i'll tell you the symmetry and i'll show you the picture also okay so tetrahedral system will not have center of symmetry so g should not be used so that's why for the doubly degenerate orbital only e is used and in case of t2g also you see g is removed and it is only t2 okay and the one which separates these two is called as barycenter and that splitting is called as tetrahedral splitting so it is represented by delta t and the energy difference between barycenter and the higher energy orbital is now 2 by 5 delta t and the splitting between lower energy orbitals and barycenter is 3 by 5 delta t just the opposite of octahedral okay don't have to worry now this is the splitting in case of uh, tetrahedral crystal field what is delta t tetrahedral crystal field splitting delta t is nothing but the crystal field splitting e orbitals are decreased by 3 by 5 delta t and uh, t2 orbitals are increased by 2 by 5 delta t okay so these are the informations you are getting from the splitting diagram of tetrahedral complexes clear hope this is clear to you just only one difference just interchange the orbitals and remove the g from its name and interchange the 2 by 5 3 by 5 values that's all okay now i'll move on with uh, some more information about this tetrahedral i told you right that the g g subscript has to be removed that should not be used in case of octahedral complexes because there is no center of symmetry okay so this is the picture of tetrahedral and you see there is no center of symmetry so this is the center point and if i come uh, lower to that center point i am having one ligand but if i go in the same direction opposite opposite to that i don't find any ligand here okay only if i find equal ligands from the point when i move up and down or left and right i should have same compound or the same ligand or the same atom then only that the metal atom or the system is possessing center of symmetry we can say but here there is no such kind of thing and in above also you see top we are having one ligand at the same distance we should have another ligand here if we have another ligand here then we can say the molecule is having center of symmetry but there is no ligand present here it is slightly away because it is maintaining the tetrahedral angle right which is one not uh, 9.5 degree so there is no center of symmetry present here in case of tetrahedral but whereas in case of octahedral you see when you go from the center point to above and below left to right or uh, any side you, if you move you can find the same ligand position at equal position okay got it so octahedral is having center of symmetry now octahedral field splitting will be slightly greater than the tetrahedral field splitting okay delta o will be greater than delta t so how much it is greater 
delta t and delta o relationship this relationship is very important delta t is equal to 4 by 9 delta o okay delta t is very small so that's why delta t is very small that's why pairing does not happen and all the complexes are high spin in that case okay in most of the cases you can find high spin complexes for tetrahedral complexes got it so this is about the splitting of both the complexes and crystal field uh, theory postulates and its related informations if everything which i have taught so far is clear to you just put a thumbs up or uh, give me the confirmation message by typing yes what is high spin high spin i told you right if the electron is not getting paired up and if it is uh, just to see just see here if the electron is, if the fourth electron is not uh, pairing with the T2G electron, instead of pairing, if, if it goes to the higher energy orbital, then those system is called as high spin complex. If pairing occurs in the lower energy orbital, then the name of the complex is low spin complex. That's all. It is just the name. It is just the name of the complex. If electron pairing doesn't occur, it is high spin. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, now I'll uh, go with the next topic, which is the color in coordination compounds. Okay, so the color of the coordination compounds was not explained by valence bond theory, right? So that's why we have studied this point under the disadvantages of valence bond theory. So color of the complex work could not be explained by DBT, but it can be explained by CFD, crystal field theory can explain the color of the complex okay so how does a complex gives color so let us see by taking this titanium hexa aqua compound complex as an example so can you find out the oxidation state of this complex of the titanium atom can you find out the oxidation state so this three plus is nothing but the charge on the complex actually it has to be written like this okay can anyone uh, get me the oxidation state? Very good. It is plus 3. Very good. So if it is plus 3, how many D electrons are there for titanium? How many D electrons are present for titanium 3 plus? For titanium, the configuration is 3D2 and 4S2. For titanium 3 plus, it is 3D1 and 4S0, right? Three electrons are removed. Yes. Good. So that one electron is there in the one of the d orbital okay now according to crystal field theory you can see there are six ligands attached to this titanium means what is the name of the system tetrahedral or octahedral if six ligands are attached if six ligands are attached to the metal ion what is the name of the system tetrahedral system or octahedral complex first first you should not take this much of time to answer this question yes it is octahedral all of you try to answer okay it is octahedral so octahedral field splitting occurs yeah it is good good try to interact okay then only the class will be interesting fine now the octahedral splitting occurs so t2g orbital and ag orbital they will split like this and the one electron which is there in the d orbital has occupied the t2g orbital and uh, giving rise to t2g1 configuration now this electron is going to absorb some light energy okay so it is absorbing the light energy it is absorbing some blue green region of uh, the vibgr part okay the from the visible region it is absorbing the light of that particular visible region frequency light it is absorbing and the electron which is there in the lower energy orbital, it is now going to shift to the higher energy orbital. It will absorb this much of energy. This is the delta E. This much of energy value it will absorb and it will go to the higher energy orbital. 
and it will give rise to this type of configuration. Okay, the T2G electron has now jumped into the EGL orbital. Now, this is in higher energy configuration, excited state configuration. So, no electron will stay in the excited state for long. Again, it has to come back to the lower energy by releasing the amount of energy which it has observed. Okay, so it will release the same amount of energy which it, it has observed and this electron will come back to the lower energy that is T2G orbital back. Yeah, that is by emitting radiation. Yeah, so that energy which it has released, which has a frequency of H mu, that frequency will fall in the visible region. It will fall in the visible region leading to or giving rise to the color. One of the VGR, okay? One of the VGR color you will get. So in the last lesson, the end of block lesson also I have told you this concept. The same concept is uh, applied here. So what is this? The color is produced due to the PD transition. From one D orbital to another D orbital, electron is moving. Or the negative charge, which is nothing but the electron, that is moving. Charge is moving from one D orbital to another D, D orbital, leading to DD charge transfer or DD transition. And because of this DD transition, complex is exhibiting the color. And this is explained by CFT. Okay. So you see the color that is exhibited by this complex. It is violet. Color of the complex is violet. So it is absorbing the blue-green region frequency and it is giving the violet color. Okay, so always we can able to see only the color which is complementary to the color which is observed. Okay, we can we will be able to see the color which is complementary to the color which is observed. For the blue green region, the complementary color is violet. Got it? So always you will observe the complementary color to the color which has got observed. Got it? So this is how we are getting the color for the complex. Okay, now next I am going to tell you the influence of ligand on color of complex. Okay, how the ligand is inducing the color and what is the influence of ligand of, uh, on color of complex that we will discuss now. So from uh, this part only, we have got uh, the neat question in the last year. Okay, last year means in 2022, we got a neat question from this part. So for this, I'll uh, take the nickel 2 chloride complex, uh, nickel 2 chloride uh, salt. And to this salt, if I add water, I will get an hexa aqua complex, which is green in color. Okay. Now, to this complex, I am going to add one ethylene diamond. As you all know, ethylene diamond is a bidentate ligand, right? So how many water molecules has to be replaced by one ethylene diamond? How many water molecules has to be removed if I want to insert one ethylene diamond to the system? One water molecule I have to remove or two water molecules I have to remove? Yes, good. Two. I have to remove two water to add one ethylene diamond. So I will get the complex like this with the NiH2 four times and the ethylene diamond one. Okay. Now you see the color has changed. If I change the number of ligands or if I change the ligand, color is changing from green to pale blue. Now, to this pale blue complex, I am going to add one more ethylene diamond. Now, two more water molecules will come out and the second ethylene diamond will replace that. And I will get H2O two times and ethylene diamond two, two complex. So now this complex is purple in color. If I add one more ethylene diamond, that ethylene diamond will replace the remaining two water molecule also. And what I will get? I will get trisethylene, uh, trisethane one comma two diamond nickel complex, which is violet in color. Okay, this this doesn't seem to be violet, uh, but it is violet. Okay, okay, sorry for the color. It is actually violet. In color. Yeah, kind of, kind of red, red violet, kind of pink. Yes. Now you can see the color is changing. So why? Because of the ligand. We are changing the ligand. The color is also getting changed. So the ligand is inducing the color to the complex. Okay. The color is influenced by the ligand which is attached with the metal atom. That is the concept. 
now i'll show you the neat question which was asked in uh, neat 2022 from this topic okay and you are going to find out the answer for that question is to you on the screen so three complexes are given all the three complexes are given there in the ncrt book also just now i have discussed that the question is the order of energy observed which is responsible for the color of complexes can you guess the answer? You have to relate this with the energy observed. Option C. Very good. Answer is option C. So how how option C is the correct answer? Can you explain me, Sandeep? Why option C you selected? Why that is the answer? On what basis you have selected option C as the answer? You have already uh, come across this question. That's why you have selected or you have applied the concept. If you have applied the concept, can you tell me the concept? Any idea? Due to more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Still. Still. Still come to the point. You are nearing the point, but you didn't reach the point. Can you try some some more? Try, try and give me the correct answer, exact answer. If more number of EN is present, why it has to absorb more energy? On what basis? If I have some other ligand. Other than EN also, I will get different colors, right? Not only with EN. So what can be that? Very good. Very good. Ethylene diamond is a strong field ligand. And H2O is a weak field ligand. So just before few minutes only, we have discussed all the strong field ligands will have more splitting value. The delta O will be more. If I'm having T2G orbital here, EG will be here. Right, strong field ligand will have more splitting. So, what the this electron which is there in the T two G orbital has to do? It has to observe this much of energy, more energy to go to the E G orbital. So, the energy observed by the system which has strong field ligands are more. And since we have three strong field ligands in compound C, that requires more amount of energy. Then in compound A, two strong field ligand is present. That's why it is coming next to C. And lastly, one ethylene diamond com uh, complex is uh, requiring the very least energy. And it is going to the last position. Okay. Very easy. It is very easy. But you have to be very careful in seeing the options. In compound A, two ethylene diamond is given. In compound B, one is given. In compound C, three is given. Okay. Just you have to be very careful. Okay. Don't give the answer just like that by seeing the thing. Okay. Be very careful. Fine. So now all the information about the CFT and the color of the complexes has got over. Now lastly, I'll go to the limitations. There are some limitations for CFT also. Okay. We'll see those limitations. Disadvantages of crystal field theory. First limitation is. Ligands are considered as point charges, right? So, in the while discussing the postulates of uh, crystal field theory, I have discussed. First postulate was uh, electrostatic in nature thing, and the second postulate I told you that there are two types of ligands. Negatively charged ligands are considered as point charges, and neutral ligands are considered as dipoles. I told you, right? So, here ligands are considered as point charges. Means anionic ligands should exert the greatest splitting effect. If that is the case. They should ex uh, exert the greatest splitting effect. But you might have noticed in the spectrochemical series that all the negatively charged ligands, Cl minus, Br minus, uh, F minus, all the negatively charged, most of the negatively charged ligand was there in the weak field side. Do you remember? All the negatively charged ligands were there in the weak field side. They were not in the strong field side. Okay, they are exerting the greatest splitting. The one which is exerting the greatest splitting should be in the strong field side. But in the series, spectrochemical series, they are found at the weak field side. 
so this particular point is wrong okay this is a limitation this could not be explained by crystal p theory properly and anionic ligands are actually found at the lower end of the spectrochemical series that's what i have told you now and coming to the complex the metal ligand bond according to cft the metal ligand bond is ionic but there are also some covalent nature in all the ionic bonds right so in chemical bonding lesson in your class 11 you might have studied that all uh, uh, ionic bond will have some covalent character and all covalent bond will have some ionic character those things will be explained by uh, fajan's rule you might have studied okay just to recall it you will get it but that covalent character which is present in the ionic bond between the metal ligand that is not explained okay by crystal field theory so between ligand and the metal there is ionic but no explanation about the covalent character of that bond okay so these are the limitations of crystal field theory and uh, these limitations were uh, taken into account and this was uh, rectified or uh, this was explained later on by the lft and mot by the ligand field theory and molecular orbital theory this was explained but ligand field theory and the molecular orbital theory is not there in your syllabus you uh, will be studying this in your higher classes if you are taking chemistry as your subject okay so it is not in your syllabus so that is not explained but later on this uh, limitations are explained by those two theories got it so these are the points that is being covered under uh, the limitations of cfp then the next topic is bonding in metal carbonyls. So it's already time. So if I start this topic, I will not be able to complete this. So I'll do this in the next class. Tomorrow I'll do this. Only two more topics are left with this lesson. Metal bonding in metal carbonyls and uh, applications of uh, coordination complexes. So only these two topics are left. So we have covered all the theories. We have covered Werner's theory. And we have covered balance bond theory. And today what we have discussed, we have discussed crystal field theory and its splitting, octahedral field splitting and tetrahedral field splitting we have discussed. And uh, later on, color of the complexes due to crystal field theory we have discussed and the limitations of crystal field theory we have discussed. So this is the summary of today's class. Tomorrow we will complete this lesson and we will start the new lesson. Okay, tomorrow I'll start a new lesson for you, which is again very important uh, for your need. Okay, clear? So if you have any doubt, you can ask me now or in next class. So go and study again. I told you this coordination compound is very, very important. Which lesson? Which lesson? Tomorrow only I will tell you that lesson. So you come for the class on time tomorrow, you will get to work. Okay. It is P block. It is P block. P block 2, group 15 till group 18. P block lesson we are going to see. It is not there in your syllabus. It is P block is not covered in uh, board syllabus, but P block is included in uh, your JE as well as NEET. So you might have not uh, see that lesson in your book. I don't know. Uh, which book we are uh, which with with basics no no in p blocks in p blocks some topics are included some are left in old book we do have the people of uh, a lesson in the new book i don't think uh, the lesson is there in the book i don't know which book you are using the old version or new version i don't know if you are using the old version you can see that lesson but the whole lesson is not there. Only very few topics are covered for your NEET and JE. Those topics we are going to see. Old version you are having. Then you might have have this uh, P block. Some parts are deleted in that. Some parts are deleted in that P block. I'll tell you the deleted part. Yeah, I'll tell you the deleted part in tomorrow's class. The major part, which is very hectic for us, is deleted. So that is a very good news for you all. So the, we will see uh, the less... Uh, some parts we will discuss. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow we will discuss. Okay, students, thank you so much for listening to the class today.
Take care. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hitashree. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.